I loved him. I mean, I loved him when, when he didn't love me anymore. Day in and day out, watching him get further and further away from me. I could see in his eyes when he looked at me. I could see he hated me. Hated me because I needed him. Oh, I was so frightened, so mixed up. It's so horrible to see someone who's become part of you, slipping away, slowly, to feel helpless and empty and lonely and frantic, wanting to do something, anything, anything to bring him back, to patch things up, to try to, to tie together the, the few remaining bits of happiness. And then that awful day, when he, he drew the money from the bank. And I knew the end I'd been waiting for had come. But all my fears were realized. That he was going away. I went mad. He mustn't go away. He mustn't go. Anything to stop him, anything. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't mean to kill him. I only meant to stop him. To stop him from going away. I want to ask you one question. Did you take the money after you killed him? You may answer that, Mrs. Saxton. Yes. The question is, is she guilty or isn't she? Then, was it premeditated? Did she know what she was doing at the time? As I see it, we've got a big responsibility in this. We ought to make sure it's all clear in our own minds before we vote. Well, Mr. District Attorney, what do you think of it? Justice will be done, of course. I mean, privately. I never have a private opinion. Okay. Governor? You think so? Why not? On the front page for weeks, on the wires all over the country, you become a household word. Naturally, there's been considerable interest. The public is always interested in anything that affects public morals. Public morals. It's just good entertainment. bad she didn't have the right lawyer. You don't think to... Sure. But they couldn't. It was a crime of passion. That jury doesn't know what passion is. Bunch of saps. My father is the foreman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's really awfully nice. You're awfully nice. You're awfully fresh. That's right. Well, gentlemen, are we ready to vote? Any objection? All right, let's vote on the first question. Guilty of murder in the first degree. Right, yes or no? Guilty of murder in the first degree.
and on the 18th day of April was sentenced to be put to death in the manner provided by the law on some day in the week beginning the 15th day of August. Now it is hereby ordered that execution on the said sentence be done upon said Ethel Saxton by you, the said agent and warden of the state prison, in the manner provided by the law. On such day of the week, beginning on the 15th day of August, as you shall determine, within the walls of your said prison, or the yard, or enclosure thereto adjoining. Don't be silly, baby. It's a lucky break for both of us. You get the money, and I get the story. Nobody loses. It's open and shut. Why, it's a walk away for both of us. Well, I don't know. It ain't as simple as all that. Well, Manuel, we had a lot of trouble with you newspaper reporters. He's liable to... <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's liable to take a poke at you. Or slap us both into jail or something. See, I'm in a... I'm in a funny position there. Him being my father-in-law and me living at the house. Uh, just temporary, you understand? <laughs> like that. How do I know you won't cross me up? Listen, big boy. What's your first name? Joe, isn't it? Yeah, call me Joe. That looks like we knew each other, see? Listen, Joe, I'm putting myself in your hands. Now, I'll come around to the house about three o'clock just so that they'll all get acquainted with me, see? Mrs. Weldon will be there, won't she? Oh, sure. Oh, and Ada. Ada, that's your wife, yeah. How'd you know? Yeah. And then later tonight, about nine, I'll be around with the shortwave set, and then you'll get your money. If I try to cross you, all you've got to do is throw me out of the house. That's simple enough, isn't it? Well, I suppose uh, Welton gets on to it, or later. Well, you've still got an out. You didn't know any more about me than they did. You get sore at me the same way they do. Oh, I helped them throw you out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, what's your idea in getting welding in on all that? Oh, nothing very important. You see, uh, my newspaper will broadcast a special private broadcast of the execution. A phony, you see, giving all the details, which you will pick up on the shortwave set, and which Weldon will overhear. Just another angle on the execution. We uh, just want to see how he acts. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's, that's kind of tough on the old man. I don't know. Well, I'll see you at three then, eh? Okay? And then uh, later at the house tonight. Yeah. Yeah. At three. Have a drink? A drink? <laughs> I've got to play a guy here in a minute for four bits a game. That a boy... Keep the old head clear, huh? Mm. Well, it's a bargain then, huh? Mm. All right, fine. So long. Uh, so long, so long. Got swell. I go to Chicago. Let these mugs settle their own troubles here. Get my cut. And I shake this girl, Stella. A cute kid. She's not right for me. Too fast, you know, highbrow. Always asking questions that are hard to answer. Nice kid. But I'm not ready yet to settle down in the suburbs and wear golf panties. I gotta get my million first. Besides, there's... Well, I'll be stuck in Chicago for six months. I'll be going out to the ballpark, betting on the Giants and the Yankees. But I lose on the Giants, I can make up on the Yanks, or maybe the other way around. Say, kid, have they had any bulletproof grandstands out there? Huh? Want a light? Yeah, thanks. Gonna be late session. Uh, you're telling me. Hey, Stella, you're spending the weekend in there. Ada! All right. Is my dress ready? Stella! How many times 
have I asked you not to yell from upstairs? All right, Dad. Ask Ada to bring the hot rest, will you? I'll tell her. She's going out for that Mr. Boney. Boney? She cried when he called up just now. She didn't want to come out, but she persuaded him. She's been like that on and off for weeks. Where is me? Stella! Stella! Rodney! Rodney! What's the matter? Where are you going tonight? I'm not making any plans. Dar is coming out. I don't like that boy. He seems kind of flashy. Suits me. Stella. Stella. Yes? I don't want you to go anywhere. Be seen anywhere tonight. I'd rather you didn't go out at all. I don't know what God's plans are. But I'll tell you where I'm going when I see him. Stella. Now look here, Stella. I've stood for all I'm going to today. Everybody pestering me. Newspapers, telephone, letters, reporters, telegrams. A lot of feeble-minded people accusing me of everything up to murder. And then to come home and find the same thing. You've got to get hold of yourself, do you hear? What's all this got to do with me? That isn't what's worrying me. Yes, it is. Everybody's on edge. And I don't want you to make any insinuations. Who's insinuating anything? I thought you were talking about me and God. But if you can't keep from bringing Ethel Saxton then I won't insinuate. I'll tell you right out what I think. If it weren't for you, Ethel Saxton would be free. She committed murder. The law. The law. If she'd had any proof. If she'd had a decent lawyer, she wouldn't be dying tonight. And she's going to die. Well, you may be right. If I thought there was the slightest doubt that what I did wasn't right, I'd... Well, let's not go into that. It's just that I... I don't want you to go out for this phony tonight. Don't worry. He may not give me the chance. Try and be back by 11. 11? Yes, if I can. I see where Plunkett is sure of his renomination now. That 
last speech did it in the way he handled the whole case. Afterwards, he came up and thanked me and said I was right to ask the question. He was glad I did. He must be very considered. He's the best district attorney we've had in years. I wish I could have taken that money from the evening news. You could use it. Joe had no luck again today. No. A friend of his came up this afternoon to look over the radio set. To buy it? I don't think so. I wish he'd get a job. <clears throat> Can a man understand how Ethel came to slay her mate? What bunk? Pages of it. They make her a heroine. Her husband guilty for making her kill him. Well, the whole thing ought to be more dignified. The way it was at the trial. Joe's friend. Oh, come in, Mr. Nolan. Good evening. This is the set Joe wanted to look at. This is Mr. Weldon. How do you do, Mr. Weldon? Joe is expecting you. You know, it's funny, but I've been trying all day, well, for a week or so, not to think about it anymore. And then, I don't know, I get to thinking I wonder what she's doing now. I got to get my mind on something else. Now then, Bob. Mr. Nolan's been waiting for you. Hello, Joel. I got, uh, I got tied up in a little, uh, conference down at the corner. Did, did, did you bring it with you? Yeah. It's over there. Know how to work it? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> it's easy. Take a look at my set. I made it myself. Ain't it a beauty? Look at that fourth simplex coil. Stall along until he goes out. Oh, the, uh, the fourth simplex coil, yeah. yeah. If it wasn't for that, you see, the uh, periodic lag in the transverse waves would blur the tone. You gotta be good. Mm. Periodic lag. That's not bad. Is it, Mr. Weldon? Mm hmm? Oh, uh, yes, yes. You can notice it for 99 cents on the That's a break. Oh, keep it low, won't you? Keep some waters outside. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, Joe. Don't get the place littered up. Aunt Elizabeth said she and Uncle Richard might drop in this evening. I think many guys know as much about the radio as I do. No, Joe. You ought to get a job. <laughs> not me, not me. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm not saying much, but one of these days you're going to be surprised. That so? Well, let me know when, will you, Joe? I'll be waiting upstairs. Yeah, I think everything's going to be all right? Just do as I say and leave it to me. Oh, uh, how do you do, Miss Biggers? How do you do? Oh, uh, say, uh... What do you want? Well, nothing, except, uh, I couldn't have got that job even if I had got there an hour earlier. Oh, Jill, think up another alibi. All right. All right. Don't, uh, you mustn't mind Ada. She's, uh... We're going to have a baby. Well, luck to you. Thanks. Hey. It's a telephone. You shut it off, can't you? I don't want any of the other papers honing in on this. Sure, I know what you mean. It's a good idea. It's been interfering with the music all evening anyway.
you detect the tube overloads and cloud some of the high notes, or is it the uh, harmonies? You've got to be careful how you talk about radio around here. This guy all right? Sure. Hello, Gar. Come in. Hello, kid. It's the boyfriend. This is Mr. Nolan. Mr. Nolan, this is Mr. Boney. How do you do, Mr. Boney? Your name was... Nolan. Glad to meet you. Say, Mr. Nolan, take Joe for a walk, will you? Certainly, if you say so. Come on, Joe. How do you get that way? I... How are you? I, I, I asked Mr. Nolan to come here. We got a lot. We got a lot. We got a What? Oh. Hello, kid. Hello. Kiss? No. Bad at me? You know I am. Well, kiss me anyway. Well. So you'd break our last date. No, I was all set to come, like I said, when that fella called up. Now I gotta go out to Woodlawn to see him before I get the train. I gotta collect some hard money. It's a dirty trick. Oh, I'll be back. When? Six months, maybe. What if you don't come back at all? Or find someone else? Well, same to you. If I thought you'd think of someone else, I'd... No, 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 no. Driving? Well, yes. Take me with you. Oh, it isn't just the date. I've got to... I've got to get out of this house tonight. Why? What's the matter? You know. Dad. Tonight, Ethel Saxton... Oh, yeah. They're sure riding them hard, aren't they? He's all worked up. The whole family is. It's an awful mess. Oh, well, I'd like to help you out. I would really, kid, Please, only... Please, God. Now, say, look here. Oh, it isn't as bad as all that, is it? You don't know. And they're raising me. What about? You. What about me? They don't think I ought to go out with you. No, they don't. Well, I don't think they're so hot either, sending a woman to the chair. No, Gar, you know how it is with Dad. There we go, too. Let's not talk about it. Oh, well, I'm awful sorry about this, kid. But I've got to be going. I wish I could stay with you a little longer, but I can't. You see, I've got a couple of birds waiting out in the car. All right. What time did your train go? 12.30? Why? I'll see you there. But oh, you can't do that. Well, yes, I can. You can't do that. Why? Why not? Well, you can't. You oughtn't. You can't go down to the station alone that time of the night. I know my way around. Then now, look at here, Stella. You know you can't do that. Now, get the idea out of your head. I can't let you go. I won't. I won't. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stop by here on my way back. I won't have much time, so when I honk the horn, you... I'll come right out. God, if you're not here by a quarter of twelve, I'll be at the train. I'll be here. Oh, you're a sweet kid. Don't, don't take it so hard. Go, oh, what's this? Go, oh, you've got a gun. Yeah. I gotta collect that money. Go! Oh. Now, don't worry. I'll see you before 12. All right. There's nothing the matter with me. Where's your friend? Isn't he coming? He's been here and gone. What's the trouble? Nothing. What makes you think that? What is it? Nothing. Well, is your big conference over? 
I saw the car driving away uh, while Bob was phoning. So I, uh, I thought we could come back. Say, who was the dame in the car? What did you say? I say the dame, the gal in, in Gar's car. Who was it? There wasn't any girl in his car. Oh, yes, there was. You must be mistaken. It wasn't his car. It couldn't be. There were two men. He was taking two men. Why, I'd know that car anywhere. There ain't another one like it. Not around here, anyway. I spotted it parked down the block. I was wondering why you didn't uh, park it out here in front. Down the block? Yeah. Didn't you know it wasn't uh, parked out here in front? Well, it's a large evening, isn't it? <laughs> I told you I was their aunt, Mrs. McGrath. Oh, yes, it's my aunt and uncle. Hello, Aunt Elizabeth. Hello, Ada. Hello, Ada. How's your father? Pretty well. <laughs> Hello, Aunt Lizzie. Uncle Dick, here you're ready to give me another razzing. Still of the language you use. Does that sure? He's corrupting my language, my morals. Uh, hello. You still hanging around? How you making up? Fine, thanks. How are you feeling? Swell. Never felt better in my life. I know. Let's play a little bridge. It'll help pass the time. No, I wouldn't like to play. Why not? She's probably playing solitaire herself. I hope she wins once. I don't think she will. She's not lucky. I wish you wouldn't talk about her all the time. We won't anymore. You're all taking this too seriously. I knew you'd be feeling kind of down. That's why Richard and I came over. Why are you nice of you, too? Come on, let's play. I've been wondering uh, what I would have done in your place. What's that? I've been thinking uh, they used to hang men for stealing. I'm wondering if we haven't become civilized enough this by the... Well, time to figure out things like that. What are you trying to do? Make Dad out a murderer? Oh, let's play. For goodness sakes, let's play. Talk doesn't get us anywhere. Can you play, young man? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, enough not to make any boners. Oh. Well, I tell you what. You be my partner, and I'll show you as we go along. Thank you. to you the latest news bulletin, the following statement by the governor. It is regarded as certain that no action will be taken to postpone the execution. Told this by her attorney late tonight, she seemed on the verge of collapse. According to her attorney, Edgar V. Ingersoll, her only comment was, I have had enough of good men. The governor is a good man. The members of the jury, particularly the foreman. Joe, the foreman? Why are they talking about you, Edward? How did I know they'd cut in on the music? They'd cut in on anything to give out news about her. That's gay. 
One hundred below and a hundred and ten above. And for heaven's sake, don't forget we're vulnerable. I don't see why they keep bringing me into it. I didn't have anything against the woman. On the evidence, we couldn't do anything else. I suppose they figures because you asked the question. Oh, sure I did. The lawyers were sparring back and forth, getting us all mixed up. So I asked her straight out. Did she take the money after she killed him or didn't she? When she said she did, well, it was all clear and easy. Pass. Uh, three diamonds. Pass. Uh, you certainly made a name for yourself. A uh, little slam in diamonds. Oh, I don't care about that. It might have come out anyhow. I don't know but what we'd have found her guilty anyway. Yes, but I mean the question. That's what got her. Oh, I wouldn't say that. The law says a juror has the right to ask questions. There they were, wasting state funds, nobody getting anywhere, so I spoke right up. Well, of course, I don't know much about it except what's been in the papers. But they do say uh, murders of passion. Oh, but it wasn't. It was premeditated. She's guilty. Guilty as anyone ever was. No, but giving her the chair. As they say, you can't feel anything. The worst of it's before. Thinking about it. I did my part when we handed in the verdict. The sentencing and execution. That doesn't mean anything more to me than anyone else. The last meal consisted of a shrimp cocktail, roast lamb, New green peas, mashed potatoes... Turn that off and keep it off. Fresh tonight. strawberries and cream. I didn't do anything. Shut it off and keep it off. Whose radio is it? You only mentioned what she had for supper. Who wants to know what she ate? Most everybody, I should say. What did she have? I missed that sort of interesting to figure out just what you'd like to eat if it were your last meal on earth. I'm so sorry for the woman. You can be sorry for a child that gets hurt, but for a woman, a grown woman who goes and deliberately shoots a man, she knew what she was doing. She knew what she'd have to answer for. Sure she knew. Maybe that's what she wanted. Your bid, Mr. Nolan. Hmm? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Bye. Bye. One club. Bye. 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 Sit down, Dad. You're distracting. Think so? Mm. Forty-six seconds past eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Funny how we just can't keep him looking at the time, isn't it? Why? Why? I'll answer it. Gentleman here named Ingersoll says he wants to talk to Mr. Weldon. Says it's important. That's her lawyer. What are you coming here for? Well, then you, you've got to do something for me. I've been to everybody. I've been to the governor. He won't listen to me. I want you to appear to him for a stay, a postponement. Nothing I say can make any difference. The governor would listen to you. He couldn't afford not to, don't you see? But I have nothing to do with it. There aren't many men who can make a governor jump through a hoop for them. I mean, Mr. Weldon, that you can make yourself a national figure. Oh, I see. So that's what you came here for. Pressure. Publicity. You know you've nothing now. Nothing at all that makes any difference. 
Mr. Weldon, you don't understand. You're trying to cook something up at the last minute. Trying to use me, make a fool of me. If we could get a stay, maybe we could find something. It's out of my hands. It's out of my hands. I was a mere instrument of the law. It doesn't concern me personally. All right. I guess there's no use. She dies. Well, that's that. Oh, come on, let's play bridge. Catch me? Passing up an opportunity like that. Do you still hold Mr. Weldon responsible for your conviction? Yes. If you had it to do over again, would you do the same thing? Yes. Are you afraid to die? Yes. Mine. It's funny the phone doesn't ring anymore. The phone? I shut it off. Nuisance answering it all the time. Hello? Yes? No. Thank you. That's my trick. Why, Richard? You mean, when did you shut it off? About an hour ago. Why? You wasn't expecting anybody to call you at this hour of the night, was you? It's a quarter of twelve. I've got to go. At this time of night? I've got to go. Where are you going, Stella? To meet Dar. Where? At the corner. Why doesn't he come here? He, he didn't want to disturb you again. But at this time of night? He's, he's leaving tonight. He's going to take a train. Where's he going? Chicago. You're sure you're only going to the corner? Where'd you think I'd be going? Chicago? You make me laugh. You think I'd go, Dad? Do you love him? Hmm? Terribly. Oh, Stella. You're so excited. <laughs> now, repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father... Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't do it. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, God. I was just coming to meet you. Yes. Yes, right away. I wouldn't have let her go. Hmm. Well, she's all right. But at this time of night? The kid's all right. Going out at this time of night. We could have made the robber easily. It's ten of twelve now. Ten of twelve. Eleven minutes, she goes to the chair. <laughs> what did you do that for? You fool. Huh? Not a work tomorrow. Twelve. 
Nine it is now. Edward, stop thinking about it. That's right. You really ought not to keep thinking about it. I think I'll go to bed, if you don't mind. I'm kind of tired. Hard day. Look here, Edward. Get hold of yourself. Hmm? Oh, it's not that. I'm tired. I... All right. I'll stay up. Come on, Ada, and play. The cards are dealt. We only need 20 for game. How can you expect us to concentrate on contract with all these interruptions? What was the bed? One club. Ready? It's getting late, Stella. I gotta be going if I'm gonna catch that train. Don't go, Gus. Please don't go. Well, I told you I have to. I gotta get out of town for a while. Why? Well, you wouldn't understand if I told you. Oh, now, come on, kid. Snap out of it. I'm not dead yet. I'm only going away for a while. It's the same thing. I'll never see you again. I have a feeling I'll never see you again. You're a funny kid. You take things awful serious, don't you? You mean you weren't serious? Is that it? No, it isn't that. I mean, you've got to expect bad breaks once in a while. Things don't always turn out the way you want them to. That's the door. Must be the man I've been waiting for. What man? I'll let him in. Oh, must cross him, chum, cross him, must dominate. Mentibus nostris in thunder. Et qui angelo nonsiante, Christi filio tue, incarnationium cognogons, per passionium illus ecclesium, et resurrectionis, florium ericama, parandum Christum dominum nostrum. Amen. Well, then you haven't anything to worry about. I've got to go with you. Now, you know that's out. Even if... Without getting married. Oh, I wouldn't do that, kid. Either way, it's out. That's not your line. Well, now, come on, snap out of it. Go, you're going away with someone else. Sure, with a couple of guys. With a woman. Where'd you get that idea? I know. Sit right up here. I'll, I'll tell you when. So, you are a reporter. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Nolan? Sancta Maria, all oh, after Novus. Sancta Dea Genetrix, all oh, after Novus. Sancta Virgo Virginum, all oh, after Novus. Sancta Virgo Virginum, all oh, after Novus. Pater Christi, all oh, after Novus. Nota Divini Gracie, all oh, after Novus. Now listen, kid. You might as well know the truth and take it, tough as it is. We're through, see? I'm not the guy for you. I've had plenty of girls, and I'll have plenty more. You're pretty sweet. It's been awful nice. But this is a stopping off place. I love you, God. I won't let anyone else have you. I won't. Oh, now, come on. I'll be a good sport, Stella. Let's finish it like we began it, with a laugh. No, no, no rough stuff, no noise. Just, just end it like we began with a laugh. Come on now, laugh. Smile now. All right. Get out of here! Get out of here! They've opened the cell door. She comes out. Two matrons oh, have to help her. Stop it! Stop it! She is white. All at the movies. Not her interminata. All at the movies. Not her amoebas. All at the movies. Not her admirabilis. God. Kiss me goodbye. Good girl. Very weak. Her eyes... Stop it! Just stop it! Stop it! it. <laughs> you think to put one over on me, don't you? You bought your way into my home and got a big scoop. You hounded me and hounded me and hounded me to talk.
I'll talk. I'll talk for your public. I'll talk. You wanted a statement from me? All right, I'll give you one. If that will bring me peace, I'll give you one. She killed him. She killed a man. She's electrocuted. It's the law. That's hard, but so is murder. You've got to punish murder. It's the only way. Man or woman, it doesn't make any difference. I would do the same thing if I had to do it all over again. And now, get out, all of you! Get out! Sorry, Weldon. That's the way they break sometimes. It's an outrage. If I were you, I'd do something about it. If you don't mind, I've had enough. Elizabeth, would you go? Come on. Killed him. What for? What's happened? Why didn't you throw the gun away? Why didn't you leave it? I'll plead guilty. Hello, everybody. What's the matter? Dead. Stella. Didn't he try to attack you? Didn't you fight? Struggle? I'll go to the camp for it. And I don't care. I don't care. Don't say a word. Nobody say anything. I didn't. Don't say a word no matter who it is. Mr. Weldon, who are you? What do you want? What do you want? I'd like to speak to Stella a minute. Stella? Stella isn't feeling very well just now. Would you mind coming back tomorrow? She was just going upstairs. Perhaps I can make up to you for what I did tonight for the paper. Stella, did Garboni get off on that train tonight for Chicago? Did he? No. Do you know where he is? Yes. Where is he? In his car. He's dead. Do you know who killed him? I did. Dad, you, you've got to do something. You've got to. There's only one thing we can do. But we'll do everything we can to help Stella. Stella, Ada and your mother are going to take you upstairs. I want you to lie down for a little while. Don't think. Just lie down and close your eyes. Will you do that? Come. Come, darling. Can we trust you? I think so. Hmm? 
I'd talk to the district attorney. Why do you say that, Mr. Nolan? Don't forget he has you to thank for his verdict. Don't forget he's your friend. Yes, of course, that's right. I can talk with him. Wait a minute, there, there must be something else we can do. There must be some other way. You can't do that. Give me a little time, I'll, I'll figure out something. The telephone number is Rogers, 1847. Rogers, 1847. Keep ringing. He lives on Rockland Avenue. It won't take him long. Mr. Plunkett. Yes, I know. But it's very important. Thank you. She's getting it. It's pretty late. Mr. Plunkett? Oh, Mr. Plunkett, this is Edward Weldon. Weldon. I was foreman of the Sexton jury. Mr. Plunkett, I... Tell him something's happened tonight. Mr. Plunkett, something terrible happened tonight. Don't tell him what. Just tell him to get over here quick. You must come right over. No. Tonight. Yes, you must come over tonight. It's important. Why? I can't tell you. I mean, not over the phone. Yes. Well, not exactly. Yes, it has something to do with it. Yes, if you've come over. You will? Oh, thank you, Mr. Plunkett. Yes, it's not far. 3959 Marine Avenue. Up Rockland Boulevard, past the plaza. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He'll be right over. We've got to fix up a story. He tried to attack her. You get the idea, and then to, to save her honor, she uh, uh, self defense. We'll tell him what's happened. I love Stella, she's my daughter. But she broke the law. Do you mean to say that for a set of dried up laws that are being smashed to bits every day by professional criminals, you'd... But I'm no criminal. I'll leave it to Mr. Plunkett. I'll throw her on the mercy of the court. The heaven's name, man. What have you got in your veins? Milk? Yeah. That's right. What's that you say? Don't you ever think about human beings? Stella, her own child, and you mumble about law. Don't you talk to me like that. Dad, we've got to have an alibi for Stella. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You want me to be an accomplice. You want me to obey the law, except when it hits me, my own family my baby. You weren't hounded these last few weeks for nothing. You know as well as I do that something happens when we all get together and kill somebody. Something happened to Stella tonight. Killing meant something to her. It seemed to her to be brave, even righteous. I have to think. I have to think. Maybe the district attorney. Maybe he'll accept the plea of manslaughter, perhaps. How did you know about... About what? Well, how did you guess about she and Gar? I saw her when she came in. I figured right away something had happened, so as soon as I phoned my story to the office, I walked around the block and I found him folded up under the wheel of his car. She must have been crazy. The story, the alibi, we haven't fixed it up. Well, what do we say? That he tried to attack her. 
Tell him the truth. You better go inside. I'll let him in. Come in. No. What are you doing here? Bodyguard? Yes. What have you got here? What is it? You know, I think it would be a swell idea if you were to drive Mr. Plunkett's car around the block for about half an hour. What's the racket, Nolan? He works for me. Sure, but you don't want the cops to. Watch your car waiting outside, do you? At least not till you're all set for him. All right, Eric. Drive up to the bridge and back. Make it 20 minutes. Okay, Chief. Now, what is all this? You know Mr. Weldon, of course. This is his son, Arthur. And this is, uh... I'm in law. Joe Biggers. How do you do? Weldon, what's the trouble? My daughter, Stella. Well? On the night that Ethel Saxton was being executed, the daughter of the foreman of the Saxton jury, think how this will read in the papers, Mr. Plunkett, killed her lover. That isn't true, Weldon. It's true. Your daughter? What made her do it? Self-defense? Did he try to attack her? As far as I know, there are no extenuating circumstances. Has she told you about it? Yes. My son here has the... Let me see it. Hers? No. She says she took it from his pocket. Who was he? A foreigner, I think. Gar Boney was his name. He called her up tonight. They had a date. He didn't want to keep it. She got him to come out, though. And then she sent me and, uh, me and Nolan here away. I saw him driving away in his car with another girl. So we come back. When I told her about it, it nearly busted her up. He came back about 20 minutes of 12, and she went out to his car. She said he was going to Chicago, and she wanted to tell him goodbye. She was very high-strung all evening. I noticed it when she went out. But I didn't think about it again until I saw her come in. What did you say his name was? Gar Boney. Boney. Gar Boney. Oh, yes. She said she got this from him. That's what she said. Did you have one in the house? No. Did she? She didn't know what a gun looked like. Much less how to fire it. What made her do it? What reason did she give? She didn't give any. She just went crazy. I'll tell you why she did it. Because Ethel Saxton died tonight in a blaze of glory. How do you happen to be here? Story. Is your sister here? Yes, sir. She's upstairs. Tell her to come down. I want to talk to her. How much have you phoned the office? Nothing. Yet. Mr. Weldon, have you anything to say? No. We'll have to submit. What do you mean? If she did it, she must stand trial. You mean you won't oppose it? How can I after... After what? What are you talking about? Like you said to the jury at the trial. The law is the same for everybody. I see. You expect a jury to convict her? It has been done. How do you do, Miss Bowden? Well, this is Mr. Plunkett, the district attorney. Oh. There are a few questions I want to ask you. Mr. Plunkett, there must be some Now, mistake. Mrs. Weldon. I want you to tell me, Miss Weldon, just as carefully as you can remember it, 
exactly what happened. I can't. Answer him, Stella. Leave it to me, please. Tell him everything. We're going to do everything in our power to take care of Stella. She doesn't have to say anything. She should have a lawyer. If she doesn't talk to me, of course, a lawyer can always see her in jail. What a nice story that would be. You keep out of this. Certainly. What happened, Miss Wilden? Why, he was going away. This evening? Yes. He said there were two men in the car. Joe said... There were There weren't. Well? He lied to me. He said he had to go out to Woodlawn. Joe said there was a girl in the car. After he... After we... I see. You wanted him to marry you. To take me with him. To Woodlawn? Chicago. He was going there. Tonight. Was he the first man you ever loved? Yes. Why was he going to Chicago? Business, he said. What was his business? I don't know. Where did he get his money? I don't know. Why did he carry a gun? He didn't always. Why did he tonight? He said he had to collect some hard money. How long did you know this, Boney? A long time. How long? Since May, at the trial. May? At the trial. What's that got to do with this? Nothing. Don't be offended at what I'm going to ask you. It's very important. Are you going to have a baby? No. I'm going to ask you something else now. Something I want you to think over very carefully before answering me. Do you remember pressing your finger on the trigger of this gun? Why, yes. Why, no. Careful now. Do you remember pressing your finger on the trigger of this gun? Why, I don't remember that. How many times did you fire this gun? I, I don't know. Once. There are three empty cartridges. Three. Three. Do you remember firing three times at this bony? No, I have. There's a very good reason why you can't remember that, Miss Weldon. Why? Because you did nothing of the sort. Well, what? I think you've been lying to me and to your family here. Oh, no. Yes, I... your story is too perfect, too simple. Don't you think so, Nolan? It's perfect. Mr. Plunkett, I don't understand. It's very interesting, Mr. Weldon. Your daughter has always had a very active imagination. Highly strung, sensitive. Yes. Yes, I can see that. But I've told you it's true. I've told you everything. No, you haven't. Not half. What was his business? Where did he get his money? Who did he have to see in Woodlawn? Why did he carry a gun? Why was he leaving for Chicago tonight? I told you all I know. How did you know he had a gun? I... How did you? I felt it in his pocket when he kissed me goodbye. It's perfectly obvious, Mr. Weldon, your daughter is in a state of nerves and mental collapse. She's just been through a most trying experience, the details of which are not yet entirely clear. Isn't it a fact that your daughter was interested in the Saxton case? <gasps> yes, she was. Followed it every day. Yes. Knew all the details, probably even better than you did. It worried us, but I, I guess everybody got worked up. The papers. Which side was she on? Which side? Did she, was she for the law, or did she sympathize with the Saxton woman? Well, of course, she felt sorry for Ethel Saxton. Only tonight, she said, there you are, my point exactly. Well, what is it you're getting at, Mr. Plunkett? We'll come to that later, if you don't mind. Oh. Of course not. Give him time. What did you know about this fellow, Boney? Why, I never talked to him much. I kept thinking Stella would get tired of him. Well, he was a four-flusher. We tried to get him to talk, gave him plenty of chances, and he shut up like a clam. 
He had plenty of money, though. You ought to see his car. 3800 it cost. Had eight, eight, eight cylinders all in a row. Had a radio on the wind, on the dash. Where'd he get the money for a car? I don't know. What did he use it for? Business? I don't know. I see. You rode around with him for four months and had no idea what he did for a living. No. Didn't he ever tell you what he did? Didn't you ever ask him? Why? I loved him. <laughs> Let her alone, can't you? Let her alone. I'm sorry. Now, Miss Weldon, you said he went to Woodlawn tonight. Yes. He had this. Yes. He said he had to get some hard money. That's what he said. Did he get it? I don't know. Was there trouble? I didn't ask. Where did you meet him tonight? Here. He came here. What time? About 12. Where did you go? Nowhere. We got in his car. We drove around the block. There were cars passing while you were talking? Why? I don't remember. I suppose so. Did you notice a big closed car stopped on the other side of the street? A closed car? Yes. On the other side of the street. I don't remember. This fellow, Bonnie, he had enemies. People who'd like to get him, didn't he? Yeah. No. I don't know. Sure he did, lots of them. He didn't like to meet strangers. As a matter of fact, wasn't he nervous all the while you were with him in the car? Yes, he... he wanted to catch the train. He wanted to get away? Yes. He was afraid he'd been followed from Woodlawn, wasn't he? He didn't say so. But he, he... was nervous. Yes. Afterward, after he was shot, what did you do? I just sat there and, and then I came home. You see anyone? No, sir. Were the windows in the car open? Uh, no windows, Mr. Plunkett. It's a sports car. I saw it. Nobody around? No. Nobody. That's all. You won't take her away, will you, Mr. Plunkett? Wait, Mother. Well, Mr. Plunkett, will you? It's manslaughter, isn't it? Nothing more. It's murder. First degree, if we can find the man who fired that gun. How, how did you figure that out? It's perfectly obvious your daughter, who over a period of time has been excited about Ethel Saxon's execution, perhaps sympathizing with the guilty woman, even to a point of identifying herself with her, who at the same time has found herself involved in the most emotional crisis of her young life, and who finally underwent the shock of seeing the man she loved killed, has by a curious psychological quirk deluded herself into the unshakable belief that she is guilty of this crime. This impulse may have its origin in a subconscious desire to kill this man, an impulse by the way which many normal persons experience. I'm glad, Mr. Weldon, you and Nolan here were wise enough to call me in before the impersonal machinery of the law. That must be my man now. I think, Miss Weldon, you had better not see anyone for a few days. Go out, of course, with your family, but why talk to people for a day or so? After that, uh, vacation, a little rest and quiet, and you'll find you'll forget all about everything. Everybody. Where's the car now? Around the corner on Sunset Avenue. Alec, someone's been taken for a ride. Kid named Bonnie. He's in his car around the corner on Sunset Avenue. About halfway down the block. Nolan here found him. He wants it exclusive. Take the car down to headquarters. Here. Have clearly trace it. Check the kid's fingerprints. They may show something. He was out in Woodlawn early in the evening collecting. Nolan here got it on a tip. And keep Mr. Weldon's name out of it. He's had publicity enough recently. 
Okay, Chief. Mr. Plunkett. I... I've got to get this straight. It's a perfectly clear case. Another gang killing. That much is obvious. Whether it will ever be cleared up will be up to the district attorney. And Ethel Saxton? It often happens the law is better served by applying the spirit rather than the letter. Whatever may happen in any particular case, justice is done. Good night, Mr. Willard. Don't worry. The country needs more good, upright, honest citizens like you. Good night, Nolan. Oh. Good night, Mr. Plunkett. Ha, ha, ha.